Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at OneElect, and today we're going to be talking about how to use tagging with Microsoft Azure resources. Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about tagging on Azure. Now, tagging on Azure is a way to organize resources that gets outside of the kind of out of the box experience that you get with Azure. That is using something like a resource groups and subscriptions to manage and organize things. Tagging gives you the ability to group resources together in a variety of different ways for a variety of different purposes. And there's a lot of things you can do with tagging that are supported across the Azure ecosystems. Some of those would be things like applying governance and, and compliance policies to resources with specific tags. You can do cost reporting with specific tags. You can do different kinds of queries to get different kinds of resources that are associated with a given tag of some kind. So we're going to go into the Azure portal today and actually create some resources or tag some existing resources. And then we can use the portal to get back a list of resources that have a given tag on them. But the way that you use tags isn't so much just querying them in the portal. We'll be talking about tags in future videos, specifically around compliance and governance and security related topics as we go forward in our security series. But for now, we're just going to talk about how tags work and when you would want to use these and how you'd want to use these. So fundamentally, a tag on Azure is a key value pair. So you have a key that is some kind of key that you want to use to be the organizational thing that you're trying to use the tag for, say it's a business unit. And the value of that tag would be the business unit itself. So in my example here I have on the screen, I have a few examples where I've uh, tagged here. And one of them I had to say I have my unit right here. That's the key that I want to organize around. And then the actual value of that would be the actual unit that I care about. Say I have a business that has an accounting department and I have a business that has a production department and I want to organize resources around that. I could set the value to the department and then the key would be the unit. Similarly, if I had a partner, like I was working with a business partner and I had a lot of resources deployed in Azure and I want to be able to generate billing reports around a given partner, well, I could set an owner tag and then the value of that would be the partner that I care about. Say I'm just managing their Azure resources. So every time I create a new resource, I need to assign an owner to that particular resource so that when I go to generate my billing reports, I can filter it based on whoever the owner of that particular resource is. And then I can do things like environments, like say if I want to have a prod or a dev environment, I can tag things as dev or prod, and then I can apply different uh, kinds of compliance policies to those. So dev environment Environments may not need the strict security uh, requirements that my production environment does or something like that. Or if I want to do some automation, for instance, I could say shut down and then one of my uh, policies could be for a VM. If I set my shutdown to daily, it would shut down that VM. So these are just some examples. We'll get into some of these details in a minute. So as I mentioned, you can use it to apply a lot of different kinds of things to Azure resources. So what are tags used for? They're used for resource management. That is kind of organizing your, your resources around something that isn't necessarily baked into something like a resource group or subscription. You want to kind of stripe it across different resource groups or different subscriptions. Tags can be useful for that. Cost management, I mentioned an example of that. I can use it to generate reports for specific tagging schemes. Operations management, you can use it for automating uh, various things on Azure using Azure automation. You can use it for security checking and compliance. So you can require that certain tags exist and you can use a policy to apply to those resources as well. Compliance and governance, you can use this to help uh, denote when something is tagged. You can use compliance policies to make sure that tags exist so that you can track things uh, on Azure according to the tags that are available. You can use it for autom automation, as I mentioned, uh, under operations management, automation for a number of other things as well. So you can definitely take advantage of tags. And there's a lot of other uses that you can have for uh, tagging on Azure. So these are just some examples that you can use tags for. There's a lot more than this, but there's kind of a, 
uh, high level categories that Microsoft likes to talk about when we talk about tagging. And these are the kind of types of tags and they kind of come across as a gradient between IT oriented tags. And then on the, uh, if you can imagine uh, IT oriented tags being things like the environment that it's running in and things like that. And then business oriented tags that have particular objectives and goals for business purposes. And then there's some middle ground there as well. So types of tags would be like functional tags, uh, subset such as the app or the tier of the app that I'm running in. Say it's a, the application is the accounting app and the tier is the web or the, it's the application. The application is the accounting app and the tier is the database. You can use functional tagging for that kind of thing. Uh, you can use it for classification, something like a SLA. So you might have a tier of SLA for uh, d d disaster recovery. So oftentimes in disaster recovery, you have a, a, a mission critical uh, like zero tier that these must be running for the business to operate. So you would have a classification around an SLA at, you know, this has to be 24 by seven. This is tier zero. Then you might have less uh, critical applications in tier one and then so on for tier two, tier three, depending on however many levels that you have and you can tag something according to that classification. And that's one such example as that. Accounting, as I mentioned, you can have things like department or unit that you can use for billing reports or cost management around resources. And that's very uh, useful for whenever you use Azure Cost Manager uh, to get reports. And then if you use a bill back model, you can kind of take your Azure bill and carve it up and spread that across the business units that are responsible for those particular resources. And you can build the, the cost back to that group so that you're paying for your Azure, not out of the IT budget, but out of other people's budgets or something like that. Partnerships, as I mentioned, owner. Uh, uh, I mentioned that the, the owner of a resource can be a business partner of yours that you're not actually uh, involved with as part of your business, but you're managing that resource, but you want to know uh, who that partner is, then you could say, hey, I want to have my owner uh, set to that business partner. I'm managing the resources and other uh, partners have their resources set according to that. And then process. And the process is again going to be things like a uh, business process. So this is a workflow that provides uh, some kind of reporting for accounting, or this is some kind of workflow that produces some kind of data that we use to monitor our factories or something like that. And so this is a purpose driven uh, type of process that it has business value associated with it. And so this is one way to organize tags and the, the more functional tags are going to be more of those that are IT oriented and the, and the further you kind of go down in this list, they become more uh, business oriented. So if you can think about it like that, uh, where I have these are more IT oriented up here and um, the and if I wanted to think of the uh, business down here, I should put BUS down here. Um, the, the further I go down this list, they become more business oriented uh, while up here, the more IT oriented. So the IT organization is probably going to have a pretty good handle on what these are going to look like when they go to start tagging resources. But as I get down in the weeds on this, um, these become more business oriented. So it requires that the um, IT department collaborate with the business at large to kind of come up with an idea of what a tagging scheme is going to look like what's going to serve the organization best because like i said some uh, organizations use a bill back model where the bill back for a particular asset is paid for by the organization that uses that so on azure if that is an accounting app that's what paid for out of the accounting uh, department's budget versus other companies that don't do that that wouldn't be appropriate so a lot of this is going to depend on the business model that is being deployed at an organization and some may have uh, partnerships that are intra organization some of them are inter organization such as uh, a third party uh, application that you're managing for somebody or if it's intra organization it might be that you have 
um, different organizations that are managing different parts of Azure, but you want to uh, utilize tagging to say, well, although this resource is in my my tenant or my area of management, it actually belongs to somebody else that is outside of my management area. And I can use partnerships at that business level to talk about who the owner is or whatever that tag might be for whatever the business uh, value of that is. And then process, of course, we've talked about already. And that's just strictly a business process that you're trying to identify for that particular tag. So all in all, there is a lot of thought that needs to go into a tagging strategy before you deploy this to Azure. And you want to be able to kind of do this up front before you go to Azure because uh, this will have implications downstream. And it's a lot harder to go back and apply tags after the fact than it is to do it going forward because usually it's easier to create a resource and do it while you're creating the resource and require that a resource have specific tags on it when you create the resource and then it is to create the resource and then have to go back and tag it later on or if you have a large deployment and it's just a mess and you have no way of knowing what's going on there you have to kind of go back and audit everything at that point so this is one of those things that it's always kind of best to do the work up front to kind of figure out how I'm going to operate my tagging strategy on Azure before you ever start really getting into Azure at that point. However, if you're already on Azure, you can always apply tags to existing resources and you can do that audit to kind of figure out where things are and then start applying the tagging even though you have those resources in Azure already. So it's not to be disparaging if you didn't do this whenever you went to Azure, but it's a good idea to think about this critically before you deploy the strategy to uh, Azure rather than just do it ad hoc. You want to kind of put some thought around it. So with all this said, let's go over to the Azure portal and let's create some tags on some resources and then let's see how the Azure portal can uh, get me a filtered list of things with specific tags on it. And this will just kind of give you a basic demo of how tags work in the Azure portal. But again, we're not going to get into the weeds on everything that these things can do, but we'll be covering that in future videos as we go over some more topics in security, as well as other things on Azure. We'll be mentioning tags for those purposes as well. Okay, I am here in the Azure portal and I am going to just go to all resources right here and start looking at a few of these and I'm going to tag a few of these resources. So typically on most resources in Azure, what you can do is go into the resource and go to the overview. And on the overview, you'll see uh, something down kind of at the top here. Usually it's in this top box. And you'll see something called tags and you can say change or click here to add tags. So I'm going to say click on click here to add tags. So what I'm going to do is add some tags to some resources here. So I'm going to say I'm just going to call these um, my app and I'm going to say this is a web app. I, these are just some random resources that I have in my dev subscriptions here that I'm just going to be using for my uh, demo today because I don't this is all dev stuff so I don't really have it well organized but if this is production I would certainly want to uh, have something that I would have better organization around that so I'm just going to call these tags my app and the value of web I'm going to click that and save it and I'm going to go to maybe let's just go to this VM here and let's go to add a new tag and I must save this one as my app and I'm going to call it web as well. And I'm going to select and let's just choose this, this, uh, this particular one right here. I'm going to click and add, add tag and select my app. And let's go to web for this one. And that is going to create three new tags for three different resources on my uh, Azure resources that I have across five different dev subscriptions that I have for my uh, resources here. So I'm going to go over here and let's go to my all resources view again. So if I wanted to get a view of those using this, I can uh, have filters up here. So if I if I fill, remove some of these other uh, filters up here, I can add a filter. Um, I have the uh, all subscriptions selected. If I come down here, notice I now have in my select filter here, I have resource group type, kind of location, etc. But now I have tags associated with this. And here's that new one I 
selected here. And it's going to give me the ability to choose values from that list. So I can select that one and then it's going to apply that filter based on the tag that I selected. So these are the three resources now that I have tagged with my app and they all have that particular uh, tag associated with them. So with that in mind, I can then go into this and I, let's just click change right here and let's change this particular tag uh, right here and let's go to delete or edit whichever I want to do to it and let's let's change this from web to let's back end if I wanted to do that and let's save that tag right there so if I go back to that resource view again click on all resources and let's filter this by tag again and let's add in tag my app and notice what I have here I have selected uh, a web. I need to refresh this. Let's see if I can get that new value that I added for my new resource type. And let's clear off some of these other filters. And let's go to tag my app. Let's see if it shows up. There it is. I had to refresh the page to get this new value right here back in. So it's allowing me to filter this by that back end. So I changed the value on that tag. And if I wanted to do compound filters, I certainly could do that as well. So let's go into maybe those resources and add in um, a new tag. Let's just call it my owner. And um, let's say my app here, let's apply all the tags that have that, all the values for my app. So I'm getting again, those resources. And let's get in a new tag here. Let's go to change and I'm going to add in a new one here. Let's say, let's call it owner, like we said, and let's just say that this owner is blaze and save that. And let's go over to another one of these resources right here and let's create the owner tag and let's do owner again. And this one, I'm going to say, change the owner to April, who is my wife. And I'm going to tag these new resources as uh, owner. And now I have my app and owner as the tags here. So back here on my resource view, I can refresh this. Um, and let's make, let's refresh the page here to get those new values uh, associated with this. And let's clear off some of these other tags, which, you know, probably isn't necessary, but if I wanted to, I can now look at tags based on owner. And if I wanted to select all the resources that have the owner of Blaze, there I have it now. But if I wanted to filter it based on owner and another tag, I can do a compound filter as well uh, for web and owner, and it's just gonna return that same resource that we saw already. But now I can set complex filters in addition to unary filters for the tags that I have associated with given resources. So you can see here that I can get uh, cross sections of different filters on tagging based on the values, based on the fact that it has a given tag. I say if I wanted all reach all the tags for uh, this, uh, I just want it to have an owner tag. Everything that's tagged with owner, I can get that. Uh, and that would give me a list of everything that has the owner tag, regardless of the value, or I can do it based on uh, my app or whatever it might be, I can get complex filters for uh, these given resources. And this ability to get a cross section of resources across different resource groups, uh, different, uh, these are all in the same subscription, but uh, across different subscriptions, across different resource groups, gives me the ability to uh, filter things and view things in ways that are not out of the box experiences from Azure. So not by subscription, not by resource groups, etc. I can view them by things like the apps that are assigned to them, the owner of the application, the business unit that, own, that, that is responsible for that, et cetera. And those are ways that you can use uh, to uh, organize resources so that you can apply the things like we said, policy, costs, et cetera, to these. And we'll be looking at how you do that in uh, future videos, particularly related to security, when we look at things like um, automation and compliance, et cetera, on Azure. So this has been a quick demo on how tags work and how you can use them to create filters but those filters will be used in other parts of Azure and we'll be looking at how to do that so thanks for watching this edition of tech on fire with blaze and we'll be looking at more security features of Azure in the future
If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.